welcome guys good to have you on this is good man this is really really good my squad is in here squad is all in here rod van all the way from zambia representing zambia loving it loving it loving it loving it mzuzu is in the house <laughs> yeah trying to see if lilongwe is here as well and b towns you know you have to represent you know you know you have to represent so as you come in we're basically going to continue we're basically going to continue uh so i'll pick up from the questions that um were left unanswered and um oh okay i see zora here basically um talking about Mixler and uh, the importance of it. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, we will make a plan on Mixler. I like that one. I like that suggestion. Thank you, uh, LPZO, on that one. Bundle issues are real. The struggle is real in Malawi. So we will make a plan for the next one for Mixler so that even if you can't see me, you can hear on Mixler. Yeah. Wow, man. Zico Mo is around. You're ready. Prince Lilongwe is here. <laughs> I see some good representation. So, yeah, just also to let you guys know, last time, some of the questions that I had actually touched on, uh, these questions were basically, I dealt with the controversial ones a lot. So I basically dealt with the one concerning uh, suffix and me, if there is beef between me and suffix. That one has been asked so many times, and I basically address that issue to say, look, Suffix is my brother. That's my little brother, and uh, I support him. We are very, very good friends. We're family. Um, I wish him all the best. There's no hard feelings between us. Uh, so that one was dealt with, and then uh, dealt with the question about the false prophets. We dealt with that one as well. Um, so, yeah, there were a number of... Uh, uh, questions that we had dealt with and we're going to basically pick up from there and continue feel free at some points if you have some questions as well to bring those up and uh, we shall allow that to uh, basically be dealt with properly so feel free to do that um, we shall we shall also deal with a few more new ones oh i see chinyonga let me guess i see you <laughs> representing chinyonga ah nice one this is good and Prince is saying L City is here. So I'm loving it. I can see that you guys are prepared and good to go for tonight as we are continuing from where we left off. I did 20 questions and we're basically going to deal with a few more. All right. Um, I'm looking at, oh yes, Mzuzu, <laughs> Chifuniro representing Chiwavi. Yes, I'm loving it, man. Hey, Zuzu is rolling in thick today, huh? There are some serious people coming in from Zuzu. I'm loving it. Yeah, man. Um, so we'll be welcoming the rest of the people as we come, as we continue with what we have prepared for today. So, question 21, and uh, we're basically starting off. Question 21. This one deals with, would you collaborate with a secular artist and why? This is a question from Willie Balingi from Tanzania. Oh, wow. Okay. We had some questions from TZ. And um, so basically, huh, would you collaborate with a secular artist and give reasons why? Man, this is a, this is a real one right here. Oh, SA is here. Rabon, ah, welcome, bro. Good to have you around from South Africa. I don't know if you're in Joburg. Are you in Pretoria, Cape Town? Talk to me. Where are you? Nice. Christian Wanangwa. Oh, Krim. <laughs> welcome, guys. This is so good. I'm excited. Loving what you guys are doing. And um, so, yeah, let me break down the one about would I collaborate with a secular artist? All right. So, I want you guys to know that there's uh, principles and convictions that I have when it comes to collaborations and working with uh, artists that are not born again. Uh, so some of these things are not as black and white as you may want them to be. But basically, I just wanted to say that uh, there are different philosophies of ministry. 
And uh, the first one that I basically wanted to address and um, <clears throat> basically touch on is to say, it's very important uh, for you to understand your philosophy of ministry. And I understand my philosophy of ministry. And I just basically wanted to say that um, there's the philosophy of ministry where you look at your music platform as a pulpit, okay? You look at your music platform as a pulpit and basically you, it's so similar to the way a preacher would uh, basically handle their pulpit, all right? So whether it's T.D. Jakes, T.D. Jakes would not let two chains come and preach on a Sunday. You get what I'm saying? Uh, Paul Washer won't let Rick Ross, you know, get on the pulpit a little bit and just minister, you know, just for a little bit. You know what I mean? Um, John Piper wouldn't, you know, let DMX drop a sermon or two. Though Kanye did it, but, you know, John Piper wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> and Kanye did it, I think it was earlier on before he was basically serving under a pastor. So if your philosophy of ministry is that one, where you treat your music platform as a pulpit, uh, then there are certain things, uh, there, there are certain ethics that you will use uh, on your platform, okay? Not that we are hating on the people um, who are unsaved, but, you know, even when you read the Gospels and Jesus would jump in the boat, uh, yeah, Peter, and basically push offshore because the crowd is big uh, and preach, he wouldn't give an unbeliever a chance to say, okay, just preach for a little bit, you know what I mean? Um, if you're taking your platform as a pulpit, uh, then basically you have to be sensitive. The people that jump on that platform need to be people that share uh, your convictions. They share what you believe in, you know, the things that you hold very dear. They share your convictions because you feel that uh, when you have a pulpit or a platform like that, you consider the sheep or the people that God has entrusted you with. Uh, so you need to be careful because whoever follows you, whoever listens to you, basically will trust whoever you put on your pulpit, okay? So they will say, hey, you know, if John the Baptist is allowing this person to preach, then John the Baptist trusts this person and basically vouches for this person, okay? So if somebody is not born again and you are born again, it's very obvious that you have different uh, understandings and different convictions about the things uh, that basically you stand for, okay? So this is the first one. This is the first philosophy of ministry where your platform is taken as a pulpit. So in that one, it's difficult to collaborate with a secular artist because of the way that you carry yourself. But now, having said that, um, I wanted to also let you know that um, it's very important for you to also realize that as far as their principles and things that you follow, from time to time, you can get direct instruction from God to do something, okay? So there are times when even in the Bible, you see God telling a prophet, hey, go marry that prostitute so that Israel will know that you um, are giving a message that Israel is like that prostitute. They are not faithful to the Lord. That doesn't happen all the time, but you see it as an incidence once in scripture where that actually happens. Uh, so from time to time, God can ask you to do something which is unorthodox, which you normally wouldn't do. So, hey, you know, if God has asked me to do certain things at certain times, though I have my principles, I don't follow principles. I follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. So in those instances, uh, those specific instances, there's a very big possibility that if God wants me to collaborate with someone, hey, if I know it's God, I've prayed, uh, I've read the word and I've sucked counsel from people I trust. In certain instances, it may happen that I will collab because I'm trusting God, okay? So that, that is that one. But there's another philosophy of ministry. And I guess you see people like Lecrae and other people um, who basically take on this philosophy and they collaborate uh, with people who are not saved. And it's a way for them to actually reach out and to minister to those people. I remember once sitting down with Kelvin Sings and he was sharing his testimony with me. And he was saying that, you know, it was the way Mastor reached out to him by collaborating with him on songs and things like that when he was not born again, that actually ministered to his heart. 
and drew him closer to God. And uh, eventually, we all know Kelvin Sings is now fully committed, you know? So um, it worked, you get what I mean? And I was hearing this firsthand from Kelvin Singh saying that was something that blessed his heart. He didn't feel judged that they would allow him to collaborate with them. So you need to decide what your philosophy of ministry is, okay? And uh, because at the end of the day, we will all answer before God, you get? And if your philosophy of ministry is the other one, but you chose not to obey, then you will answer to God on that day. You get what I mean? But if your philosophy of ministry is also the other one, and uh, hey, we all stand and fall before our masters. So there are those two philosophies. I lean more towards the one about my platform being a pulpit, uh, but I'm open to the leading of the spirit from time to time, even though that is the general way that I would take. So that's a really good question. Uh, let me see who else is here. Let me see who else is here before we move on to the next question, but this is good. From time to time, God could ask you to do something unorthodox. That is when uh, would veer from the normal stance of ministry philosophy. Yes, hey, looks like LP Zoe is with me in Zuzu, man. She's really, I can see her with like a pad and a pen taking notes. I'm loving it, I'm loving it. Um, I see Emmanuel Profound Kajawa in the house. Cape Town, wow. Good to see you, man, from South. Glad you're here. Fondwa Nijasi in the house. <laughs> this is good. I'm loving it. Augustine Mukisi, welcome. Good to see you. So, yeah, that was the first question from Tanzania. And remember, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them here as well. From time to time, I'll scroll and I will check to see what people are saying. Uh, let's continue with the next questions that are there. Uh, just give me a moment as I scroll through some of these questions because we've got loads of questions. You know, we've got about 60. I don't even know if we're going to be able to go through each and every one of them today, but we shall surely try. Lean more toward, but await the leading of the spirit. Frank Mullen. Yeah, man, some people are getting down and they're asking. All right. Um, here's another question. And this one is coming from Grego Mando. And uh, Greg Omando is saying, Pastor D, what can you say about this X regime? So he's talking about DPP here. And uh, I saw Pastor Zach firing at government. <laughs> Woo! Some serious questions that are coming up. Okay. So basically, um, I just wanted to say that it's important that we understand that Pastor Zach, uh, he basically leans on the side of God. All right. He stands on what the Bible teaches us. He has a biblical worldview. So it's not really about which regime is in power, okay? Uh, with Pastor Zach, he is basically going to speak about the truth regardless of which regime is in power, all right? If whatever regime is there is going the wrong way, then my senior pastor will address them, you know, John the Baptist style. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's Tonse Alliance, it doesn't matter if it's His Excellency Ajagwira or DPP, you know, or UDF or whoever it may be. Uh, my pastor just stands on truth. He stands on the Bible and what it teaches. Uh, and basically, if you're not going to be in line with that, then he will call you out. He will definitely stand on truth. So it wasn't about the past regime. That's another good question, but it was really more just about what he believes the Bible teaches and what it says. So thank you for that one. Uh, let's see who else is online. <laughs> Frank says, we can do an overnight for those 60 questions. <laughs> hungry people, huh? hungry people. No, 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 this is FB Live. We're going to do what we can, but we can't pull a night of prayer, you know? Maybe as the platform continues to grow, someday we'll be able to pull that one off, you know? So, yeah, Fisher Mto, welcome. This is good. This is good. All right, moving on, moving on. Uh, woo. What happened for you to take a decision for giving your life to Christ? And since then, how do you differentiate it with your past life? How do you see a future in Christianity? This is from Chris Chaps Taylor. Wow. People are bringing some really, really serious questions. All right, Chris, 
uh, Chris Chaps Taylor, what happened for you to take a decision of giving your life to Christ? Okay, let me quickly dive into that one. Basically, I think for me, what happened is that um, God was able to put me in an environment where I was able to realize that even though I've grown up in a Christian home and I've done, you know, all the right things on the outside, I really didn't have a relationship with Christ. I didn't have a passion for God by myself. And uh, I was basically doing what I needed to do because of my environment and uh, not because I genuinely have my own relationship with God, which is like, you know how um, sometimes people will, they won't sleep around because they're afraid to get HIV AIDS. They won't sleep around because they don't want some STDs. You get what I mean? They won't sleep around because they're afraid if the person gets pregnant, as I all right? Uh, but you won't always hear those kind of people say, I'm not going to sleep around because I fear God. I'm not going to sleep around because I don't want to let God down. I don't want to break his heart. I want to do things his way. I won't do this because I fear God, okay? So it's, it's, it's more that lane to say, I didn't have that kind of a conviction where I was doing things because of my love for God, my reverence and my fear for God himself. And uh, this was when I was away. I went to the UK to study um, after I finished my form four, which I did call Chichiri. And uh, so, yeah, that time really helped me out. And then I came back to renew my visa. And while I was here, uh, it's when I realized, you know, I remember going to a prayer meeting and uh, there was a person with a gift that was really operating in word of knowledge. And I had questions and this person was able to answer all those questions for me um, in a service. And yeah, from September 2004 to December, it was a lot of instances where these things were happening. And basically I realized that God is real. And I remember also reading some really powerful books during that time that helped me understand that hell is real, you know? and uh, that I need to accept the sacrifice of Christ so that on the day of judgment, uh, I would have had put my faith in Christ, you know? So I was convicted by, by the Holy Spirit and I gave my life to Christ and decided to stay in Malawi so that I basically grow and get to know God. How do I differentiate back then and now? My life has changed drastically. I think my life revolves around Jesus, all the decisions that I make, even the music that I do, I think I can sit here for a very long time. It drastically changed the course of my life and everything that I was doing. I never thought I would be a guy that preaches, you know, or boldly speaks about Jesus like this. No, no, no. I remember there was a time I used to be, you know, ashamed of people who would be all Jesus in your face, even if they did music and it was all about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I used to sit there and be like, what a waste of talent, you know? Uh, and I think back now, I even cringe, you know? But, uh, but now that I have, you know, the Holy Spirit dwelling in me, I am now one of those guys. That's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in your face. And I'm sure there are people that get embarrassed. They're like, this guy. You know, what a waste of talent. I'm sure there are people that say that if, if he wasn't so Jesus-y, he would have probably blown up by now. So yeah, man, um, that's the big difference, I would say. Uh, let me quickly also and just scroll through and see what's there. Thank you for that really nice question. Um, wow, wow, wow. Let's see, let's see. Emmanuel Profound Gajawa. Mm, welcome, my brother. My only question is why you left Real Elements. What made you so firm to stand for your decision and turning down of the signing of the major recording label. Woo, the questions have started to come. Thank you for that one, Emmanuel. Uh, to be honest, I really feel that uh, me leaving Real Elements, I realized to say that the direction I needed to take if I was going to follow God and where we were going as a, a group was two completely different ones. And uh, so basically those things, they, um, they, I got to a place where I just had to make a decision to say, look, Christ is going the other way. If I go on this road, then we're going to go on two separate ways. So yeah, let's uh, continue to the next question. You promised also Papa two, did you get a B or I? This is Sierra de Sierra. 
All right. Well, like I told you guys, that's a song that's there. All right. And uh, it's a song that's basically, I just chose to leave it there. And uh, I really believe that uh, the Lord, you know, is handling things. So I don't really see it necessary for me to put out Osa Opa Part 2. If the Lord ever tells me to do it, hey, you know, you never know. It just may drop, you know, unexpectedly like the first one. But uh, as for now, I really feel that, you know what, the message went out there and it's accomplished what it was supposed to. Uh, oh, I see all the way from the USA, North Carolina, Linda Kalida Nipiri representing my sis. When is the next album coming out? Wow. I need to talk to my PR, but that one is dropping soon, guys. I've been in the studio. I've been working. And God willing, uh, it's very possible that before we go into next year, the new album will be out. So keep praying for us, okay? Very good question. Uh, Chisomo Rosan Ganunga, on music ministry, I hope you understand how much your music touches people. With you now being a pastor, do you feel you miss out on those people? Chisomo Rosan Ganunga, thank you for that. Very good question. I basically want to say that I think me being a pastor actually just strengthens what I do, enhances what I do. I actually don't feel me being a pastor... Um, hurts my music ministry. Like I said previously in the other Q&A, I feel that pastoring is the discipleship arm and music is the evangelistic arm. So the music helps me reach people who would never come to church. It helps me reach people who normally wouldn't come. And you'll notice that when I use my artist platform, I don't use the name Pastor David. I just go by David Garirani, all right? Uh, it's only when you come to church or if I'm discipling you where you can see me as your shepherd, you can see me as a pastor. Uh, but I basically just use my normal name, David Garidani, because I know there are people who don't know me as a pastor and I relate to them through the music in that way. So pastoring doesn't hinder it. It just actually enhances what I do. Thank you for that, Chisomo. Um, wow, let's see. Let's see. People are firing now. Hey. Huh. Okay, I see another question from Zuzu. I shall come back from that one. Um, let me continue with a few of the other questions that were asked before. When did you receive Christ Jesus? That was 2004 is when I accepted Christ. Thank you for that question. Uh, it was, you know, September, December, within those months, uh, there was a lot of activity that happened in that period. Um, and uh, Godfrey Mbedza, welcome. Wow. Out of all your songs, which one is your most favorite? Ooh, Linda, that's a tough one. Let me come back to that so that I can think because I think on different days, I, I like different songs. Um, and because I write out of Revelation and God basically teaching me as I walk with him and as I experience things or when I see other people experience things, uh, I think they're different songs, you know, that I like in different seasons. So I'll come back for that. I'll come back for that. You guys are firing some really, really difficult questions. Uh, going back to some of these other questions that I already have. Um, wow. Let me know your journey of gospel. I'm growing while I'm listening to your music. How has it been, sir? This is Alex Kilowe. Alex Kilowe, thank you for that question. Basically, uh, hmm, how has it been my journey? Um, my journey with quite, of the gospel. Uh, let me know your journey of the gospel. I'm going while well, listening to your music. Okay, so my journey, man, in, in a nutshell, it's I've basically just been learning a lot as I walk with the Lord, as I grow. Um, it hasn't been an easy journey. I've had to carry my cross, you understand? I've had to let go of some things which I used to love, okay? So I'm talking about, I remember early in my walk, I had to stop listening to circular music because it had such a grip on my life and the messages that were in the music that I was listening to then was not good. So I remember having a large pile of original CDs, which were worth almost 50,000, you know, quite, and I remember piling them up after listening to a convicting message and burning them on fire, on flames. Um, eesh. No, man, it's, it's, it's crazy. I remember then being single, uh, but I had just been in a relationship and I had to basically come out of that relationship, uh, which I was in while I was unsaved, 
And uh, I basically had to follow God because the person I was with uh, was not born again. And I remember the heartbreak and the pain of having to move on from that. I remember having to stop writing and recording music for about two years so that I could grow. Uh, so the journey has been amazing. It was only two years later that God told me that I can go back and start writing music again because I've now surrendered that area of my life to God. So it's, it's a learning curve, man. It's a, it's a great um, journey. I can see some more questions popping up. Uh, let me quickly read. Let me quickly read. Wow, 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 wow. Emmanuel, you're asking again a question which I've already asked. Uh, as the social media claims that there is a misunderstanding between you and Suffix, how true is that? No, me and Suffix are in very good terms. That's my brother. We're good. I answered that last time, so we're moving on. Um, all right. Could it be that you are saying that being a pastor makes you concentrate more? on his pastoral call and he might invest less time on his art and would delay some of his projects is that what you were alluding to also okay good question yes i think it's a it's a delicate balance you know being a pastor and being an artist there are definitely times when me being a pastor will demand a lot of me but i think now especially in 2020 at the point which i'm at now uh, i've reached a point of equilibrium where i can handle both of those avenues without either one suffering. So thank you for elaborating on that, Zo. Lydia Banda, uh, welcome, good to see you. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, so let me continue here on these questions. I'm trying to get as many done as possible uh, so that we can also do maybe another 20, if not more. All right. Um, wow, 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 wow. Brother, what in your what is in your heart in this season about the church? That's Ivy Kirera. Ivy Kirera. Wow, thank you for that question. Um, basically, I think what I can say, uh, that's on my heart right now concerning the church. I feel that the time that we've been in lockdown, I think there's a lot that God has been speaking to us about. And I think that if you are wise, you were supposed to have maximized that time in lockdown, okay? I think that was a time when God was realigning a lot of us that are the church. I think there are things that we were doing before the lockdown happened, and we're just doing them as a routine, and we got used to that. But I feel like God gave us a chance to go back to some things uh, and basically critically analyze ourselves so that now as things are sliding back to normal, we're not just going to do business as usual, but each person according to what they're called to do and who they are. Uh, during the lockdown, it should have been a time for God to realign you uh, so that when things start going back full swing, you're not just doing business as usual, but you've realigned yourself, all right? So I feel like it was a time of alignment, and now we are flowing back into the new normal. Thank you for that. That's um, that's a good one. Chimwemwe Malachi Malanga, when did you become born again? I became born again in 2004. Again, maybe you didn't uh, see that one. Um, before I get too many comments, let me ask, let me answer one more question that I saw uh, LP Zora from Zuzu asking. Fresh out of seller connection, I would like to ask this question about collaborations, actually. Woo! Okay. I was surprised to note that you had never done a collaboration with either Faith Musa and Rudo Chakwera, despite you being good friends in this new season. Hey, hey. Can we expect you to intentionally seek to do collaborations with big artists like Faith Musa, Rudo Chakwera, Wambali Nkandawire? Ooh, you are shooting high. <laughs> uh, in a bid to bring on that unity that was specifically pointed out by Faith Musa to be one of the issues missing in Malawi and would be an enabler to the growth of our music industry. Yo. Yo, 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 this woman is not playing around. Okay, so to start with, I've already been in the studio with Rudo Chakwera. It's just that the song hasn't come out and it's being finished up and uh, aiming to have it on my new project. With Faith, I think, Faith Musa, where are you? You said you were going to be here, man. Are you, are you seeing what these people are saying? They want you and me to jump on a song together and collab. All right, so I think I'll ask Faith, you know. I'll say, hey, this question popped up, my brother. What? 
is thou saying. Uh, but I just want to say that um, I enjoy my relationship with faith. And I think many times people like him are approached by different artists just because, hey, he's a big name, he's doing well, he's trending right now. So let's see what we can do to jump on a song together. I think apart from jumping on songs, you can also be united in building a really good relationship with one another, which is what I feel is happening with me and Faith. We are strengthening our friendship. We talk very frequently. And I think in future, God willing, if we ever do jump on a song together, it's going to come from a very strong foundation of, of really solid friendship. So we'll see how things play out, but it would be an honor to jump on a track with Faith. I think we would do some, some magic, yeah? As far as Wambali goes, to complete that question, I've been wanting to do a song with Wambali. And uh, in this new season, I think if I die, I die. I will approach the man and pray for the best. But I do have a song, actually, that uh, I've composed and uh, I would love to run by him. He's always been somebody I've looked up to and uh, I would just be, it would be one of my bucket lists to do a song with Wambali, man. Like, I can't think of, Ooh, that would be like, I don't know, an equivalent of who, but he's, he's basically one of my favorites. So yeah, thank you for that. Um, let's continue. There's some good questions coming up today, man. Some really good questions. What things have changed in your life since you became a dad? Ooh, I think being a dad is humbling. Being a dad shows you that, hey, man, you're not perfect. Uh, you have people that are watching your life, you know. I have two daughters that are here with me, you know, in and out. Trey is in the house. She sees me. She knows my weaknesses and my flaws. And uh, it just being a dad keeps me on my knees more. It makes me pray more. It makes me humble more because, yeah, how you live is more important than what you say. And uh, it's not easy being the head of a household. And uh it's my continual prayer that my character will continue to be Christ-like. I will grow so that I can be a great model for my kids. So thank you for that question. Um, let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. Oh, hey, it's been a while since you've done a tour. When do you see yourself doing a tour again? I shall come back to that question. Uh, definitely, I think as things are opening up, now that COVID is not uh, keeping us in lockdown anymore, that is definitely a big possibility, especially if the new project comes out before next year, then we're definitely going to have to start doing a tour and uh, going around and doing the music. So thank you for that. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Ha, 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 ha. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, welcome, Sipo. Michael Talamabanda in the house. This is good. Okay, let me go back to a few more of the questions on the side. But keep them coming, guys. I'm loving these questions. I'm loving the energy. This is fire. Um, Pastor D, are you a follower of Shailin or at any point in your ministry has Shailin inspired you and are you emulating his music and theological journey? Personally, and from many others, I have found your music and ministry similar to that of Shailin. I want to know if he is one of the people that has encouraged you to stand on uh, criticizing concepts. This is from Ken. Wow. Okay, first and foremost, let me say, Shailin uh, has done some amazing things in Christian hip hop, okay? So I definitely have a lot of respect for him. And I think he is, he goes down in history as one of the greats, even lyrically. Uh, I remember when Flame came to Malawi, Flame confessed to us and told us that Shailin, when he featured on a song with Flame, uh, after Flame heard his verse, he had to go back and rewrite his and even copy uh, some of the delivery and things that Shai did. So Shailin is a beast, legendary guy. He's done a lot in terms of his music. Uh, but I would say that we differ on some things, okay? Uh, there's some theological things that Shailin stands on that I don't, all right, that I disagree with him greatly on. And um, I think you can still respect and admire somebody without uh, having to agree with them on everything, okay? So there, there are a number of things that Shailin stands on that I don't. Um, he's very much a Reformed theologian. And uh, there are things in Reformed theology that I believe and I adhere to. 
but I also have a different lean uh, on things. There are a lot of nuances in, in my theology. I think I'm exposed to a lot of uh, different parts in the body of Christ. And uh, so we have our differences. Uh, as far as standing up for the truth and saying what needs to be said, I don't think it's a Shai Lin thing and he's not the one that inspired me. I think uh, as a person, you have convictions and you have to stand on truth wherever you are, whether you're Shai Lin or Bizzle, you have to do that. So. It's not because of shy. Thank you for that question. Um, on to the next one. On to the next one. Wow. All right. All right. Do you listen to your old secular songs? <laughs> Steve Mitole uh, brought that one up. Wow. Okay. Um, Actually, I don't. Um, I mean, if it's I come across some of my old circular stuff, I, I'll, I'll have a listen, but it's not anything I feed on or listen to, because uh, actually a lot of it just makes me cringe, you know? Some of the things I used to say, I'm just like, e I don't believe in that, you know? Uh, it's almost like another person. So I appreciate the creativity side of it when I listen to my old circular music, but really, to be honest, um, I don't listen to my old stuff. It doesn't do much for me. Uh, it doesn't build me up. It doesn't challenge me. Uh, it's more the things I've done while I'm born again, uh, when I listen to that, I'll be edified, encouraged. And I think I've grown also um, from the time before I was a Christian to now. I can't wait for you guys to hear the new stuff I'm doing. I mean, I know there are a few singles that have come out, I've jumped on, but the stuff on Lost Tape Season 2, um, Fire Season 2, uh, I think it's going to blow you away. I'm, I'm excited. I really can't wait for you guys to hear it. Uh, so yeah, thank you for that question. Let me now go up. Um, there's some new questions that have come up. Tonight, you guys, you're bringing it, you know. Um, hey, Wamwai, good to see you. Hey, Pastor D, you seem to run a tight schedule between ministry and family. How do you avoid burnouts and generally being overwhelmed? Wow, that's a very good realistic question. Uh, let me just say one way, uh, Corona has been a blessing. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I mean, there's a lot of things about Corona that are not great, but I think it has just helped me a lot to realign myself, like I was saying, even in terms of my scheduling. Uh, there's a lot of things that I've learned. I've seen that I wasn't really spending enough time at home and around my family. And uh, it's basically just given me a wake up call and taught me to say, look, you need to make sure you align yourself for right so that yes, you're doing what you're doing, but at the same time, also make sure that you don't miss out on what God is doing in terms of at home, in terms of my family um, and make sure that I'm there for my family. But Another thing I'm grateful for is that my family, uh, I do ministry with my family. So we're a ministry family. That's another exciting thing. My wife is, thank God for her life. She really does a lot, you know, in terms of coming alongside me when I'm doing ministry. Uh, same thing with my daughter, Trezor, you know, um, she, she's my PR. So we do ministry together, you know, she basically... Uh, is is running a lot of things that I'm doing musically now. So uh, it helps that I'm actually spending time with my family as I'm doing ministry. And it's not always separate things that are happening. And then they're also very passionate about ministry. They're serving in the church. You know, my wife is serving in the church. And so is Trezor, uh, my daughter. So it's like, yeah, it really just brings in a good balance. But at the same time, I still need to make sure that um, I'm careful and I have enough quality time and I'm investing good time with family. Thank you for that one way. That's a, uh, a really realistic question, uh, something that needs to be pointed out. Isomo Rosan, um, during the COVID outbreak, we have had a lot of cases of teen pregnancies, political unrest, uh, increased suicide cases and economic degradation. As a pastor, what are your thoughts on these issues? Whoa. <laughs> okay, uh, let's let's basically go down. During COVID outbreak, we have had a lot of cases of teen pregnancy. That's true. Um, I think, hey, look, we can't run away from the fact that um, 
you know, in times when you're supposed to be somewhere doing what you're supposed to do and you're not doing that. The best example is King David. Uh, in the time when kings go to war, he decided to stay home, okay? What happened? He ended up falling in sin with Bathsheba when he was walking on the roof of his house. He saw her taking a bath naked, right? If he had been at war, he basically wouldn't have fallen into that. So I think COVID had a lot of people relaxing as believers, as Christians, and even those who are not Christians, uh, they were not really being productive even when they were at home. So an idle mind is the devil's workshop. We had an increase of, yeah, people ending up pregnant because, you know, they're sleeping around. But I really believe that, again, it was a time of make or break. This was a time where you were you could have been able to read books you're not able to read because you're so busy with life, busy with school. This was a time when you could have spent more time praying. It was an opportunity to either build yourself up or, you know, a time to just be lazy and let the enemy prey on you. Uh, so I, I, I'm grateful that people are beginning to see uh, to, to see who they really are when the busyness is taken away. And that's what happened with the, with the pregnancies. I just want to encourage those who have fallen, those who have made mistakes during this time to say it's not the end, okay? This is the time when you can have a turnaround and still make things uh, turn out completely different though you have made some mistakes. So just to encourage those who may have done some really messed up things during the lockdown, some bad choices, it's not the end. You're still alive. Let's look forward, all right? There's still a lot that you can do. You can change the narrative. God can help you make things better. So that goes with the team. Uh, political unrest. I, I really think that what we went through as Malawi and as a nation was necessary. We needed to have change. And you know, there are some times when change won't come until you are fed up until you hit rock bottom. And I think God allowed certain things to get very bad so that we would wake up as a nation uh, and basically stand up for what we believe we're supposed to have. So sometimes things may look like they are bad, but it's actually God working things out for the good, okay? So some confrontation is very good, though it may not be pleasant. So that goes for the political unrest. Increased suicide cases. Yes, you see, the enemy will use any opportunity, you know. Uh, I think a lot of people mentally were affected by being in lockdown. You're not seeing your friends. You're isolated. I think a lot of people allowed themselves to just be isolated in a bad way. And, you know, when you're just by yourself, uh, you can allow yourself to think in ways that you shouldn't think. So the suicide cases, uh, we really need to make sure that, look, if you have a tendency to be depressed and be very low, be intentional to talk to people, be intentional to make sure even when you're in a lockdown or a space where you're by yourself, uh, get in touch with people, find somebody you can talk to, open up to them. Because if you don't, things can get toxic when you internalize them and it can end up in things like suicide. So yeah, definitely that's a real issue. Uh, economic degradation, yes. You know what? It was a time when you couldn't really make money. A lot of people lost jobs, it was rough. Let me just take a moment to pray for people that were in that situation. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for people that have lost their jobs. I pray for people that have had their cut, cut in half, their pay is cut in half. Uh, people that have gone through economic hardship, I pray, Lord, that you will open doors. I pray that you will give them fresh ideas to make money. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you for that. Um, so, yeah, those are my thoughts on that. Ooh, KBG is in the house. Big shout out to you, KBG. Thank you, my guy, for being here. I'm actually excited. Hey, my dear Bisanti, Manyali Music Live will sponsor an online concert of your new songs. Whoa, are you guys reading this? What? We just want you back on tour soon, just to add to what Zora Matundu is saying. KBG, man. Yo, guys, have you seen this? I am so excited. Thank you so much, my brother. Ah, I'm excited that you want to see me back on tour. And you know, KBG's got a new setup. If you guys have seen that Nyali Music um, new studio, man, where a lot of people are streaming live. So even if we're not able to have a proper physical show, we can just stream live uh, with Nyali Music. So KBG, God bless you for that, man. I'm really humbled and I'm excited. Go to Nyali Music on Facebook and you can see pictures of the new studio and everything. So... Oh, I'm excited. I've just been blessed, man. You know, a free sponsorship from Nyali Music. Wow. Praise God. 
Wow, 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 wow. Now I see why Trey was excited. Victor Jerry. Ooh, you know your man, Mumandi Blesser. You have no idea. I don't know your entire story, but the little I know leaves me speechless. You have no idea how much your music blesses me. Victor, why are you trying to make me all emotional while I'm on Facebook Live, man? You can't be doing this to me, man. It's not right. It's not right. I pray that God continues to use you. Failing to ask questions today because I'm enjoying the other people's questions and somehow most of mine have been answered as well. Praise God. <laughs> Guys, Vic is like one of my best supporters, you know. Uh, I thank God for his life. Yes, the Fajibali through my wife's side, but even before that, you know, we've known each other. So I'm just grateful, man. Thank you so much for your support and always being there for me. Uh, we praise God that you're here. Guys, I'm getting some serious support tonight. I'm overwhelmed. I don't know what to say. Um, I'll be watching live with my sobo, Bambali. <laughs> Fish, I'm Tosa. Yes, let go, my sobo, man. Uh, <laughs> favor, I would forgive. Wisdom, wow. Shout out to the Chiamwakas. Yeah, these guys are just their team, you know, so... Favor, thank you for being here. It was amazing to attend one of your services at the gathering and watch you preach. What has been one of the most challenging things you have faced when planting churches and colleges? Nice question, Lee. Thank you. All the way from America, <laughs> from the USA. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges we've had planting in colleges is when you, when you come to a college campus, the registration process is not so easy. Uh, because you can't just do ministry, that you have to register with the actual institution so that they will actually let you in. So in some universities, it takes a while for them to allow us to register so we can have a room on campus where we can actually start meeting. So sometimes that is a big challenge. You know, it sometimes takes us months before we can properly register with the university where they know us, they've accepted us properly. Uh, and then we actually begin the work. So the other challenges also is after you've registered, you need to go one-on-one -on -one and basically share the gospel with students on campus. And when they get saved, they become your members. So, hey, the grind, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a lot of work, man, to win souls like that, bangono, bangono, until they can grow. So you'll find that many times you have a service and it's three people, or it's you and that one person you reached out to. So you are the worship leader, you are the intercessor, you are the preacher, you're the guy doing the announcements, and there's just one guy looking at you like this, you know, and you have to keep that person entertained and make sure they come back next week. <laughs> so, yeah, but we've seen, you know, like Chanko. I mean, look at Chanko now. I've even handed it over to another leader, and you get close to 100 people. We've moved from like a little chapel that me and Pastor Gugu used to go to um, and now we're aiming to go into the great hole, God willing. So um, those are some of the challenges that we meet. Thank you for that. I'm still on collabos. You used to be very close with the Lotta House artists from Zambia, e.g. Chungu, Pompi, Mag44. Are you still friends with them? Yes. Pompi, Mag, though we haven't talked in a while, but we are actually very close. Abel Chungu, I featured on his project. We're actually very close. We just haven't talked in a while. Uh, Heaven is Smiling was actually produced by Mac44. I had gone there. Um, and yeah, I think it's time that I reach out to my brothers again. And in this new season, we do some new things. Please also consider doing collabs with them, if not for you, but for us as your fans. <laughs> it's about the reach. Now that you have your PR manager, I would like to ask that she runs with this collab issue. I would like to volunteer myself on this one also. For those who don't know, my sister uh, Zora, who is now in Zuzu, and she's also doing ministry full throttle, Mrs. Matundu, she used to manage me. This was my first manager, so you can see how passionate she is. She never misses anything I do, but she's also giving some wisdom on how we can navigate, and we're loving it. We're taking in those things. My PR manager now, Trey, is watching, so we hear you, man. We hear you, and we're going to start applying, but you've also said you're going to you know, offer yourself to assist so we shall talk. But I love that. I think it would be nice to do a joint with Mag, to do a joint with Chungo again, and even Pompey, you know, so we shall see what we can do. But thank you for that. 
because I know my, my fans would love it. And you know, I call them friends, not fans. What makes ministry a great experience for you, Pastor D? O'Brien Theo. Wow. Theo or Theo? I, I'm, I'm, forgive me if I mispronounce your name. T-H-E-U. O'Brien Theo or Theo. All right. You will tell us how to pronounce that one. But um, basically, it's. I believe what makes ministry amazing is it, it should flow out of my relationship with God. So I think what makes it exciting for me is finding out what's on God's heart and being able to do with God what he wants to achieve in the earth. There's nothing more honorable than that for me. An idle person tempts the devil to tempt them. Well, an idle mind is the devil's workshop, basically. Um, Brendan Chapweteka. Wow. Hi, Pastor D. Have you ever been tempted to put down the mic? Oh, 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 oh. it's getting real. And just focus on ministering as a pastor, i.e. preaching and mentoring. Brandon Chapwedeka. Yeah, man, I think I think it goes both ways. There are times when I've wanted to just give up on pastoring, you know, preaching and mentoring. Uh, likewise, also, there's many times when I felt like I just need to hang up the mic and stop doing music, you know, and just focus on preaching and pastoring. So uh, I think it goes both ways. But I thank God that I'm not in that space. Uh, and God has really stabilized me uh, a lot lately. I just, I just find it as a privilege. I know I won't be able to do this forever, but while I'm able to do it, I want to do it 100%. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, wow, 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 wow. I can see, I can see. Wow. <laughs> okay, let me get that guazanga. This is good, guys. Are we going to see collabo with KBG just like way back on Nyambo, Zero to Hero, Ogumba to Kero? Are you hearing these people? <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Daja, let's talk about it. Amazing Grace, let go Masobo. Ish, me and KB have done a lot of work together, man. I think you can even take those songs and we can have an EP or two or three EPs. Um, I did recently, though, jump on a track that KB was on. And this was on Mwani's um, new album, all right? So it was Buse Africa, KBG, Me, and Ziuga. So check that song out. It was on um, Made on Monday. I think that's the most recent one uh, where I've jumped on a song with KBG. Uh, but knowing that I'm going to go to Nyali Music when the new music is out, since he's sponsoring the tour, you never know what can happen when I'm around the studio with that guy. All right? So thank you for that. Wow, wow. Kiliko's in the house. Hey, I didn't see you, man. Welcome. Good to see you. Wow. Wow. Which of your songs have impacted lives in a way that you never expected so far? Hmm. Pepsi. Good to see you, man. Uh, another good question. Another good question. I think so far, um, Basically, oh, my team is telling me that we have 10 minutes left. Oh, guys, we're going to be wrapping this up very soon. So, uh, Pepsi, good to see you, man. Somebody I've been connecting with lately, and I'm glad you're here. Uh, the most recent one, I would say, is It'll Get Better. It'll Get Better, man. That song is dangerous. I've, the testimonies I've gotten from It'll Get Better are scary, you know? And I think it's just because I address real issues, you know? Uh, the death of my mother, you know, and um, love issues, you know, heartbreak. Uh, a lot of people can relate to that. Those are timeless concepts, things that everybody goes through at one point or another. So, yeah, it'll get better. Mm, has really, and it's all ages, man. Older people, teenagers, young people. That song has really affected a lot of people. So, yeah, I think that's the song I can I can say. Before that, it's a song like Ulendo. Ulendo is another song that, hey, it has done some things. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, let me say that. Ooh, Chikondi, love Christ, love seat, Chisali. Congratulations. He's a father now, and uh, it's so good to see you here, man. I'm, like, humbled that you're on this platform. I've actually just collaborated on a song on his new project uh, called Blessed. Look out for it. It's a banger. It's a banger, man. And uh, yeah, on that joint, it's me, Love C. Uh, there's Kelvin Sings. Um, there's Baraka. It's, it's just an amazing song. 
Love C, tell us when that thing is coming out, man, because I know it's going to shake a lot of things. We need to do a video for that song. Okay, so a question from Love C. Have you ever looked back when you had mentioned names of people in a song while trying to rebuke or correct or just to defend the faith? And when you do, that is the last resort after trying having private conversations. Okay, let me see if I can understand that question. Have you ever looked back when you had mentioned names of people in a song while trying to rebuke or correct? or just to defend the faith? Okay, that's question number one. Yeah, I think um, when, I, when I look back, I think when you listen to Exodus part two and Exodus part three, you'll basically find that I mentioned people in Exodus part two, and when it came out, people thought that I was actually beefing, okay? Um, but the heart in which I had done that song was not to beef, and like I said, because I know the difference between beefing with people and basically just telling the truth. And uh, because I come from a battle rap culture, if I'm going to diss somebody, you just, it's, 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 yeah, it's ungodly, you know? So I felt like what I did in Exodus 2 was basically telling the truth. But when I saw how some of the people responded is when I put out Exodus part three, where I was basically letting the people know that, look, man, this was not a beef thing. And if you have been offended, I don't mind coming on a public platform and apologizing, but my heart, was to basically just tell you the truth, you know? Uh, and I actually personally went one by one to visit those people and have talks with them. Um, and it turned out to be really cool, you know? Uh, my relationship with like the daredevils went to a new level because of that. When I met them, when we talked and sat down, I shared my heart with them, you know? Um, so um, that's what I would say when, with Exodus two and three. Other times when I will come out and I will call out a name on a song uh, of somebody, it means that I've gone through all the channels and uh, this was, you know, last resort. Some things just, there was no other way. They, some things were addressed publicly and I had to address them publicly as well. And I have no regrets. I have a clear conscience about those things. All right. And when you do that, is that last resort ever trying, ever having conversations? Yeah, as I shared with you. Even after X3, I met those people. I actually had conversations. All right, guys, we are down to about four minutes now. We're about to wrap things up. Huh. Yes, please. We need some collabos up in here with you, my man. Let's table all these. Okay, she was responding to what I said. Bless me, Magela Piri. Good to see you. Wow, 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 wow. Chifundo Gobede. <laughs> Pastor D, can someone lose his or her salvation? Oh, Chifundo, come on, man. No, well, we have four minutes left. That's such a, a heavy question. We might have to have another session. Uh, I would have to basically sit down with you and uh, share with you different perspectives that are there in the body of Christ about losing your salvation or not based on your leaning theologically, okay? So um, let's just say it's important for you to make sure you are saved, all right? Uh, assurance of salvation is important, but I'll have to find time to either inbox you or on another uh, time when we have Q&A to break down properly that question, can somebody lose their salvation? All right, inbox me though, so we can talk some more. Um, why did you diss Bushiri? You guys have issues. Uh, we didn't diss Bushiri, uh, but we basically addressed this issue on the previous one. Um, wow, 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 wow. Let's see, let's see. Uh, off the top, few books that helped your walk. Oh, nice one. Preachers that you subscribe to that have helped your walk. Wow. Thank you, Sangwani. Um, there's a book called Jesus the Pastor, which has helped me out a lot uh, in my walk. Uh, I would basically say the book of Mark, the book of Luke, Matthew, and John, the Gospels in the Bible. Woo! Them joints, man. They're classics. They're really, I still read them frequently. Uh, they've really helped me in my walk. Preachers, um, there's a lot of different preachers that have really helped me in, 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 in my life and in my walk. Um, preachers like uh, Christopher Taylor, um, um, Dr. Felix Nika. Um, wow, there's, there's, there's a lot of different ones. Uh, Reverend Dr. Zach Gawalala, uh, Bishop Dag Hewitt Mills. Actually, a lot of books by Bishop Dag have helped me. So find Bishop Dag Hewitt Mills and read a lot of his books. He's very practical. Those books have just really changed my life, man. Um, wow, good question. Let's keep going. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Uh, 
Um, this is Debs, Taz, Cams, all right? We're going towards the end, guys. I'm trying to move as quick as I can to answer everything. How can the church play a role in taking part of the social needs around us? Very good question. Uh, we, we find that the apostles brought that up when they met and they were having a conversation. We see it in scripture where they say, remember the poor. So I think just as Christians, we need to make sure that we are holistic in our approach. We're not just preaching to people, but we're also making sure we meet their physical needs. I believe every church needs to do that. Uh, for example, there have been issues of suicide in our nation and also there are needs in the education sector where some children are lacking tuition and fees. That's a really good one. Uh, but I believe a lot of churches are actually taking care of that. It's just that they don't always go out in the public to say it. Um, so thank you for bringing that up. Um, yeah, I think here we are now officially about to wind down. Um, yeah, we're about basically to wind down. So guys, I just really want to thank you so much for, um, I have missed this question. Okay, which one, which one? Tell me, Zora, which question have I missed? Before I go, tell me which question have I missed? If you will have another Q&A session, can you do a short rap freestyle session for a few minutes? Yes, next time I will definitely drop a freestyle for you guys. I'll probably just bring somebody with an acoustic guitar and uh, bless you guys. Thank you so much for that, Lee. That's a very good point. I shall definitely make sure the next time we go on live, we bless you guys with some of the new stuff and a little bit of a freestyle as well. So I'm <laughs> dangling a carrot before you to make sure you come next time. Um, all right. Which question? Which questions? Oh, tell me. I'm waiting. Oh, Pastor Rhoda is here. Wow. What advice would you give to someone who is just starting out in ministry? Wow. Uh, I would basically encourage that person to say, don't lose sight of your personal relationship with the Lord. Remember that it is your personal walk with God that has got you to a place where you have been appointed as a pastor uh, and continue uh, to remember that, continue to value that individual walk you have with God. Don't rely on your title. Uh, never lose sight that it is God who is the one that enables you to do what you do. So even though people may be calling you pastor, uh, there are many pastors out there who are backslidden, many pastors out there who just have a title, um, but they're an empty shell, you know. Uh, so make sure that you maintain your secret devotional life with the Lord. It will make it will keep you as a pastor and even continue to elevate you to other places. So thank you for that, Pastor Rhoda. Um, okay, so this was the question. Do you have any plans to help up and coming artists? Actually, I do. The reason why I've also been doing a lot of features, you find that I'm doing features with a lot of people that are not really established, some who are not even known at all. Uh, some are not even out yet now, but uh, they'll be coming out very soon. Uh, so I have a passion for people that are up and coming. And uh, basically, I'm always ready to listen, to give advice. Send me your songs. Inbox me on Instagram or Facebook. I will do everything I can to make sure I get back to you uh, so that I can help you in each way that I can. But I also know that going forward, we're going to do workshops and things of that nature that are going to equip those that are up and coming. So feel free to get in touch with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all these other platforms if you're an up-and-coming artist. And we will basically uh, give you feedback and help you with, with advice, with counsel. And maybe we might even end up collaborating. But I, I love working with new artists. Thank you for that question. Um, oh, yes. Bless me, Magera Piri asked that. Sorry, I missed that question. Thank you, Zoe, for basically bringing that up. And you're welcome, Pastor Rhoda. I see you there. Uh, Pastor Drew in the house, shout out to you. Wow. All right. So guys, we've basically come to the end. Again, let me just quickly pray for you guys. Next time I'll end this whole thing with a freestyle session, but let me pray for you. And then basically we call it a wrap for tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Shout out again to Nyali Music and KBG for sponsoring me for uh, a free tour. And um, I just, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. This, this has just been a great, a great, great, great blessing. So thank you so much, KBG. Love you, man. Uh, let's pray, guys. Heavenly Father, again, I thank you for everyone that is here. 
I thank you for this platform that you continue to build for me. I pray that you will bless every person that was here. I pray that all the things that were said were edifying and that people will leave this place with more clarity and they will be encouraged. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you and we have prayed. Amen. Guys, I love you. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to Arise YouTube channel, please subscribe to that uh, so that you will basically get all the new videos and things that I'm putting out uh, on the Arise YouTube channel, Instagram, Twitter, follow them. David Kalidani is the handle. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thank you so much. Peace. God bless.